Who the hell is this? I'm about to mess this guy up. I'll show those damn Europeans. What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be turning this piece of wood into one of the deadliest weapons to ever rule North America. If this is your first time watching my channel, I make videos of crafting and hunting with weapons that were once carried by the Comanche tribe. Today's bow build is inspired by this photograph of Quanah Parker, who was the last of the Comanche chiefs. For my estimates, this bow looks to be less than 34 inches long. So in today's video, we're gonna be building a super short Osage bow to see if it still has good performance. Let's get started. Now the only tool I'm gonna to be using to carve this bow is a butcher knife, similar to what the Comanches would have carried in the 17 and 1800s. Now this stave is starting its life at 36 inches long, but we're gonna end up changing that later on in the video. So this stave has pretty large growth rings compared to most staves I've worked with, but that's a good thing. First off, we gotta remove this top layer and get it down to where it's the solid one growth ring all the way down. And this is by far the most time consuming step to making the bow. On staves with smaller growth rings, you've got to be really careful when doing this. In making this video, I really just wanted to show that you don't need any fancy tools or power equipment or anything to make these bows. You can pretty much do it with just a knife. This wood is extremely hard. I've had it drying for two years now to be seasoned. I really underestimated the time it was going to take me to chase this ring. It's taken me days at this point. Finally down to one perfect growth ring all the way down. This area with these pin knots is my one concern but we're gonna fix that later on in the video. Here, I'm just gonna get a rough layout of the bow and draw it on with the pencil. You definitely don't have to do this part. I normally just eyeball it. And on staves with the grain not so straight, you really can't do this part. This. This stave has really straight grain on it. All right, let's start chopping. You've just got to be really careful at this point to not accidentally cut the back of the bow where you chase the ring. If you're interested in trying to build your own bow, I should have some of these seasoned Osage staves available on my website. Uh, I also have some knives and arrow points on there as well. I'll leave a link in the comments below. All right, now we've got the basic shape laid out of the bow. Now we can start chopping on the belly of the bow. If you've ever built a bow of your own, put it in the comments down below how it went. Be sure you stick around until the end of the video. We're going to do some shooting with this bow. I know it might not look like a bow now, but it will here shortly. I 
I get a ton of comments about people asking what wood they can make a bow out of and pretty much the only wood I'll use is Osage. It's, it's the best of the best. As it gets thinner, I can start to feel the spring of the wood and the bows coming to life. This bow is going to end up being a lot shorter than my original, but this is just an experiment just to see how short we can go. As I'm sitting here editing this video, guys, you have no idea how sore my body is. This, this gives you a real workout. Well, I do this pretty often. I'll, uh, I'll be working on a bow and then I'll decide something differently, but I'm really not liking the way this is looking right here with this knot. I partially violated that growth ring on top of that knot so I have an idea instead of a 36 inch bow keep in mind I'm at least four days into this project here let's do it I don't I don't trust that knot Well, there's no turning back now. <laughs> oh, what did I just do? Well, we had another issue and this bow is now 29 inches long. My bow is going to be shorter than most people's arrows. Will it work? I guess you're going to find out. You might be thinking this is going to be like a kid's bow, but it's actually going to be strong enough to shoot through a deer easily. This scraping seems endless, but each scrape gets me closer to a finished bow. One other thing about Osage is it starts off real bright yellow like this, but it's going to end up being a dark brown after several years. Alright, I think she's ready for some notches. I just gotta decide which side's gonna be the top and which side's gonna be the bottom. Top, bottom. I'm gonna do two notches on the bottom and one notch up top. Some of the bows would have been made this way to make it easier to string on horseback. And that should be what it's gonna look like. Got it strung up. Still got a long ways to go, but we're getting somewhere. Probably about 80 pounds at five inches right now. I can't even, can't even pull it back. Here, what I'm doing is tillering the limbs to get them to bend evenly. I'm tying this string on the arrow so I don't accidentally over pull it and break the bow. And 
and just like that, we have life. The bow's alive. All right, I took a little more wood off of it. There's still a lot more tillering work to do at this point. What I do is I'll go back and watch this footage to see how the limbs are bending. After hours of tillering, now it's time to start sanding. You want to be really careful sanding the back of the bow if your stave has thin growth rings. That tiller is finally starting to look a little better. This is about the range a Native American would shoot a buffalo off of his horse. There was really no need for a long range bow after the horse was introduced. Here, I'm just putting a buckskin grip on it. Now it looks like a bow. All right, now let's build it a case and quiver. Be sure you stick around. I'm gonna be checking the pull weight on this bow here shortly. Here, I'm just starting the stitching. All right, here it is with the quiver and the case. Pretty happy how that turned out. It's not bad at all. The Comanches drew their bow to the chest. This bow has some serious poundage. This thing has some velocity to be coming from this little. The fact that it's still holding reflex after probably close to 100 shots is really incredible with a bow this short. Since this bow's so short, it can't be drawn past probably 14 inches or so. So I got a, I got some string tied there at 14 inches. I, I know this bow's pulling heavy. Let's let's see. All right. Scale zeroed. That's 30 kilograms. I'll get you the poundage here shortly. Let's try again. Right. 29.78 kilograms. All right, guys, this bow is pulling 64 pounds at 14 inches, which is absolutely insane for a bow this small. Um, this thing's got tons of power. It'll probably go fast. I've been getting hundreds of requests for bows. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I'll see y'all next time.